Hello, and uh, today we're going to be talking about the uh, a prop that's been around for quite some time, the low definition spinner, which is this guy right here. Um, we're going to talk about some of the sub models that we uh, we use when we're sequencing. Uh, we have created some to uh, to, to help uh, get a little more use out of it, and uh, depending on what vendor you got your prop from, some of the sub models may have already been created. Um, some may not. It doesn't really matter because after watching this, you'll know how to create them and uh, you'll be able to uh, get more out of your spinner. So we're going to jump right in here and we're just going to go right over here. We got our spinner selected. Just come down here to sub models, click this, and it'll pull up our sub model window. We'll just expand it, make it really big so everybody can see. So some of these submodels already existed when we uh, were king. So, for example, one of them was this Reese submodel. And so if you can see over here, um, it the, the light white show what it is. So it's basically just, uh, it lights up the outer portion, you know, tries to make the uh, spinner look a little bit like a wreath. Um, so that's one that came with it. And most of these other ones uh, recreated. The first one I want to go over is called... This one we call it concentric. Um, you can see it's made up of multiple lines. And so this first one, we have just this pixel in the center. If, you know, if I hover over it, you can see it's going to show it's pixel 178. So we come down to the next line. And you can see it's, you'll see it's got nine, and then it's got four commas, 179, four commas, 177. So we started here. And we just worked our way around clockwise all the way out. So the important thing when creating this model is you want to make sure you always start at the same point. And we chose to start at the, uh, the six o'clock position. So if I go down to, to line eight, you can see there's pixel eight. We worked our way around this way, so on and so forth. Okay. And you may be wondering why we have these commas and what it is. This will probably be the easiest place to show it. So here's line two, right? So we started with pixel two. This is pixel 186. And then if you see the very bottom row, this one, this is everyone and it goes all the way around. Well, on this low definition spinner, you can see we've got extra pixels on the outside. So think of these commas as little placeholders, right? So here we have pixel two, two, then we have blank, blank, blank. So think comma, comma, comma. And then we have pixel 186. So that's why there's these spaces, your little placeholders. So if you have a, um, you know, if you only have, if you have less pixels in between or more additional pixels, you just need to modify your spacing. Um, and that has to do with the way uh, Axelice is going to see the buffer. So everything will work in concert with one another. Um, this stuff here is that here's no outer ring. Um, and it's very much identical to concentric. The only difference being it doesn't contain the nodes in between the spokes. And when creating this, I could have eliminated all the commas between everything, but it was actually quicker just to start with this model. I copied it using this, and then I just had to edit this row to eliminate those extra pixels. And that was the quickest way to make it. All right, so the next thing we'll talk about is our wedge submodels. Um, the important thing when building your wedges is you want them to build them all starting in the same place and continuing the same direction. So for example, here's wedge one. So I started with pixel 178 right in the center. I worked my way up to the outside, clockwise to here and back down and ending at pixel 82. Okay, so that's why you see the way those numbers go. If you go to wedge two, it's the same thing. Started here, worked my way out, back down wedge three start here work your way so that's how the wedges are defined and last but not least let's go through the rings so here's ring one now same logic applies we want to create these utilizing the same consistent starting point and building them in the same direction so i chose to start at the uh i guess the six o'clock position you can see pixel nine there's pixel nine and there's pixel 179. So I started here and I worked my way around clockwise. Ring two starts here, works my way around clockwise. Ring three, ring four, 
ring five, ring six, ring seven, ring eight, and the outer ring. So this just allows us that we want to do stuff on individual rings. So that goes over the sub bottles. So we can close out of here. Actually, don't. I want to show one more thing. So you can see here, I just made this test sub model and I'm actually going to delete it because I want to show you something. All right. So let's say, let me back out one more thing and what I really want to show you here. So if we go to the layout, if I right click here, I can pull up the wiring view of this prop. So here's how our, this particular prop is wired. It started here, this is pixel one, works its way up, jumps across, comes down, and then it goes every other node back. You know, so it continues this pattern all the way around. Okay, so if you if you have this exact same prop, um, this is a Buscoyo spinner, um, and you wired it exactly how it's wired here, you can import our submodels if you need them. You won't actually have to make them from scratch. Now, if yours isn't exactly the same or wired the same, you, then you're going to have to create the uh, the submodels manually. Um, but it shouldn't take you too long, and it's definitely worth the uh, the worth the process of what you're able to to get out of this prop. Um, and so how we would import it, let's go back to our submodels. Actually, I lied. First thing we want, so what you would do is you'd open up our layout, okay? Uh, navigate it to it in a, you know, a temporary directory, change temporarily in X-Lights. Then you're gonna right click on this and you're gonna put export X-Lights model and you select this. Now I've already actually exported this, so I'm just going to cancel. Then you would come into the submodels and you can go import. You want to import submodels from file and just pick on the submodel. And if I expand this list back out now, you can see there that test submodel is back. So that's the same way you could bring it in. Um, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough to have the exact same prop and it's uh, wired in the same order. So that's just a little tip for you. The only other thing I want to show you, we made a couple of groups here um, for our spinners. Okay, we have spinner wedges group. Um, and we really don't use this and I'll show you why, but you can see it actually, it just consists of each spinner submodel. And they have spinner wedges even so this is just our even numbered wedges wedges two four six eight and spinner uh wedge odd and that's uh obviously the odd numbered spinners so now let's go see uh what we can do with these uh with these sub models all right so here's just your standard uh, let's, let's make this left or right. Here's just your your standard uh, single line effect, and you can see what it does on a spinner, right? It just comes straight across. And if we come in here and we rotate it clockwise, we can make it go up and down, um, right? If we change to per preview, nothing too exciting, different. Uh, if we go to single line, what this does is it basically foul, treats follows along as your wiring pattern. So you can see it's going up, looping back, and it's just drawn out exactly how it's wired. Um, so that can, that can give you some neat effects. But what's really sort of neat is that we come down to our concentric model. Now we can get this sort of spinning thing, and depending on you know how big our chase size is, we can you know we can get we can get different effects out of that. Um, the neat thing is now, if we go to our transformation here, let's rotate this 90 degrees. Now, look what we get. We can get this sort of collapsing tunnel onto it, or this collapsing spinner onto itself. And if we, uh, you know, a couple different ways, we can either rotate it the other direction to get it to come out, or we can change the direction over here and it'll do it. But I think you get the idea. It's, uh, you know, it just gives you another effect that you could not create with the native spinner model the way this particular prop was wired. Um, and then here it is without the outer ring. So this just gives us more of a, more of just, just the spokes without that outer ring. All right. So same, very similar things with the bars effect, right? So here we got a, 
And we get back to none. So we got a bars effect running left to right, just on the spinner. Okay. But if we put it that same effect on our uh, concentric submodel, on our concentric submodel, you see what we get? We get now we get a nice little, you know, three rotating colors. And you can probably guess if I rotate it here, do a 90 degree transformation, now we can get colors, you know, pulsating in. Uh, we'll change the direction over here to left, or we can get them pulsating out. Um, so let me actually just move these back up here. So when we get to the final part, they're where they need to be. Nice. Right, so here's a spirals effect. Uh, See, we got this moving across. And this one, um, I'll just show you. It, it, this one doesn't give you quite as much of a If we put it in a concentric group, you can see we, we get like a uh, a spiral or a pinwheel pattern. Well, we could actually create this effect using the pinwheel. So um, now I sort of showing this is not every effect will benefit from this submodel. Um, this is one effect that doesn't, doesn't quite do as much. Um, I just you know I'll show you sometimes that all of them react the same. So here's here's the morph effect, right? So you get the morph effect working up. Now if we can get it selected, yeah, same thing, right? If I get it on this concentric model, we can get it to uh, pulsate in, and if I rotate it 180 degrees, we get the pulsate out, right? So get the idea. At the the concentric model gives us the ability to do some do some renderings that we can't normally do other ways. And that's really all I wanted to show you, on, at least with the concentric model. And then I want to show you a couple quick things with these groups. So, so here's a spinner. So let me go back to here, right? So if we put this on, spinner wedges even, okay. Yeah, not too exciting. Let's put it, let's get it all set back left to right, default. All right, so it's moving across. It's just lighting it up. Okay, where the magic comes in now, if we go to our render style and we go to per model default. Now look what we get. That's pretty cool, I think. Um, you can see, so now it's treating each uh, each wedge individually, but it's doing it sort of on a group level. So it's, it's doing a single line. It's coming out, down, and back, right? So if we do it on our odd group. Yeah, it's the same thing, just moved over. Now, there is a little problem if you try to do it on the spinner wedges group, which is why I said it's a group we really don't use. Um, and this has to do with because there's overlapping uh, nodes in all these models, okay? And x doesn't know, it gets confused. It doesn't know how to handle that. Um, but it's actually a real quick workaround if you wanted to do something like this, is you put, you put the, the effect on the even group, put the effect on the odd group and now it'll work um it's not perfect because we do lose this little part but that's uh you know that's the that's just a limitation uh of, of x lights um you know same thing with the bars effect, right now we got the bars coming down let's go ahead and put it down here on the even group let's get it right let's put the same thing we want to put on Render per model default. Okay, so now what it's doing? It's running that bars effect on each one. Right? Another pretty cool, neat, neat effect. And okay. same so thing. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the per model default now. All right. So now you can see it's sort of a. Uh, it's not quite doing what we expected. And that has to do with the transformation in this particular case. We need to give it a, a rotation. So you can see it more effect, you know, creates a pretty unique little uh, unique little effect. And uh, so you, having these fairly simple submodels allows us to, to do some unique things and get a little more out of this, uh, this prop. And uh, I think it really punches it up. So that about finishes up. Uh, Hopefully today uh, you'll, you learn how to create a submodel and how we can get a little bit more out of this uh, this low definition prop and really uh, punch up some of our sequences. Thanks for stopping by and watching channels and uh, have a great day.